Hello everyone! In this video, we will see how to implement an interact interface in Unreal Engine 5. The first thing that we need to do is to create a blueprint. In this case, what I want to create is a blueprint interface. You simply have to right click in the content browser, choose blueprint and then blueprint interface. I'm going to call that BP interact interface. And I'm going to open it. The first time you open that, you should see a new function here. And we're going to name this new function interact. And when it comes to the blueprint interface, that's all we need to do. So just click on compile and then save. We will use this interface on interactable objects so they can have this function and we can detect if there's an interaction or not. Now that we have an interface, we need some form of input. So we need to create that. In my case, I'm using the first person project, but I'm assuming you have something similar. This works for the first person template or the third person template. I'm going to look into the input folder and into the input, I'm going to look into the actions folder. I'm going to right click, look for input, and I'm going to create a new input action. I'm going to call that IA interact. And in here, I'm going to add an element to the triggers array. And in triggers action, I'm going to look for pressed. I'm going to save this, can close that too. And now in the input folder, I'm going to open the IMC default. The IMC stands for input mapping context. And we can see in the mappings array here that we have three actions already. The base actions of the first person template, jump, move and look. I'm going to add a new mapping here. And I'm going to select the input action we created. So IA interact. And in the drop down of this new mapping, I'm going to choose the key to use to interact with objects. In this case, I'm going to click on the select key value here, press E on my keyboard, and this will automatically detect that my interaction can be E. Otherwise, you can look directly into all the components if you want to have something else. Here, I'm just going to use the PC components, but you can also add more mappings if you want to. So if you use a controller, you can add that on top of the keyboard input. So in my case, I'm just going to focus on the keyboard for this tutorial. So I can close that now. Now all we have to do is to actually have some objects we can interact with. So the mapping is done. We can have interactions from the player point of view. We have a blueprint interface to detect interactions. Now we simply need the object to interact with. So I'm going to create a new blueprint. So right click in the content browser. Look for blueprint. I'm going to get a blueprint class. I'm going to choose actor and I'm going to call that BP interactable. I'm going to open this blueprint. I'm going to add a new component and I'm going to look for a static mesh. So I have this cube here. I'm just going to name that mesh instead of cube. Now I'm going to add a collider to this blueprint. So I'm going to look for box, in this case, box collision. Instead of calling that box, I'm going to call that interaction bounds. I'm going to change the scales of the values here, like so. So what's happening here is we have our mesh, which will be the object we want to interact with. And we want a field around the object that will be bigger than the object. So when the player enters the bounds of this interaction, we will be able to interact with the object. So now we have a mesh, we have some interaction zone, but we still need to implement the interface we created at the very beginning of this video. To do that, click on the class settings on the very top menu. And at the bottom of class settings, you can see interfaces. And we can see that there is no interface currently used for this, um, currently used for this blueprint. So in the implementing interfaces section, I'm going to click on add. And I'm going to look for BP interact interface. When we look at that, now we have the interact interface appearing at the bottom here. If I double click on that, I can see that it creates a custom event in the uh, event graph. In this case, I don't need to have anything. I'm going to compile, I'm going to save, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. Now we almost are done. I just need to change the first person blueprint. So I'm going to go into the first person folder, go into blueprints and the BP first person character. 
you can see that in the event graph we already have a few functions happening we can have we have the jump function we have the movement input the camera input i'm going to create a new action here so i'm going to look for enhanced action you can see we have all the actions we mentioned at the beginning of the video so in this case i'm interested into the ia interact in here i'm going to create a new node starting from the triggered action Okay, I'm going to look for a for each loop with break. There's a lot of things happening with the for each loop with break. So the very first thing we want to do is to get an array. From this array, we're going to look from inside this array to find elements that we are looking for. In this case, I'm going to look for get overlapping actors. The reason we're doing that is if I go back into my BP interactable, we have an actor here, we have some collision bounds here that are meant to be to detect the interactions. So this is exactly what we're doing here. We want to get actors that are overlapping with the first person character. In this case, I want to select a class filter when I look for BP interactable. Every time we want to interact with an object, we're going to loop into the objects that are in front of us by looking into the overlapping actors. If this actor that is overlapping with the first person character is an object that can be interacted with, so it has the interactable blueprint, then we can implement the actual interaction. So from the loop body, I'm gonna go into branch, I'm gonna create a branch, and from the array element, I'm gonna look for a node called does implement interface. We want to check if the object we found does implement an interface. And in this case, we want to look for BP interact interface. If this is true, we're going to connect the value that this function returns into this branch. So it means that if the object we are interacted with does implement an interaction interface, if that's the case, I'm simply going to implement some printing and say that the text will be interaction. And since this is true, we're going to connect that back into the for each loop with break. And we're going to connect that to break. So once we found some object we can interact with, then we can stop the looping. There is no need for that anymore. So we just implement the break here. Now I can save that. And everything should be ready now. So I'm going to put this blueprint interactable on the map. You can see it right here. And we can see the bounds. And I'm going to go into play mode. I'm next to the object. Right now there's nothing happening, but if I press E on my keyboard, we can see that there is some interaction. If I go next to those cubes, press E, nothing is happening. Same thing, I can go anywhere, keep pressing E, nothing is happening. But if I get to the cube, we can see the interaction is working. So that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.